In this video, I'm going to be covering my top three technical analysis libraries in Python, what I like about them, what I don't like about them, and how I use each of them for their respective niches. Now, there are hundreds and hundreds of technical analysis libraries out there on GitHub. So it's really important that you just learn the few that you actually need and are gonna use on a regular basis, especially as most of these libraries aren't amazingly well documented and you don't wanna spend hours and hours figuring out how a library works only to find out later on that it isn't quite the tool for the job. And so by the end of this video, you should have a good idea of what kind of libraries will suit you well for your purposes and which ones I would recommend personally. We'll get going here with TALib, which is the gold standard of technical analysis libraries in Python. Now, it's based on a super old, well-established open source technical analysis library written in C and assembly. That was open sourced and made fully available sometime in the late 90s. And you can find that at ta-lib.org. Now the original ta-lib did have an adapter to connect to Python, but it was quite complicated. And so the ta library that you download from pip is actually a compatibility module using Cython that allows super easy installation of the compatibility layer. And it also speeds up the actual performance of the library, making it even more impressive. I would say speed is the number one most attractive thing about this library. Because it's written in a lower level language like C, it's gonna be way quicker than most of the things you can cook up in native Python, unless you're gonna use something like NumPy and compile it yourself using number. Now, not only do you get this incredible speed with TALib, it's also built into a bunch of other libraries, including Pandas TA, which we'll cover later on, also projects like VectorBT, etc., etc. And so you're bound to come across this sooner or later, which is why it's well worth learning and covering. Now, the downside to learning TALib is that that learning curve can be incredibly, incredibly steep when you're just getting started with the library, especially if you're new to Python or programming in general. The installation process can be quite harrowing, especially on a Windows computer. Linux and Mac tend to be a bit easier. I will link some installation guides in the description below if that's something you're struggling with. But even once you get the library installed, there's no nice documentation website like you might be used to for projects like Pandas or NumPy. It's instead built in to the module itself and you have to run the help command on a specific indicator that you're looking for. Moving on to Pandas TA, which is my second choice for technical analysis libraries. As the name suggests, it's natively integrated with pandas and numpy meaning it's very very easy to run a bunch of technical indicators for any price series that you might have you can very easily grab some data from y finance and then run 100 different indicators on it and those will be appended to your data frame ready for signal generation and further analysis there's also built-in multi-threading when you define a strategy which is going to use all the different cores on your computer and therefore speed up the rate of calculation now pandas ta can be used with or without ta lib installed without it it's just going to compute the indicators itself and that's going to be a bit slower but over time more and more indicators are getting ta lib support and therefore, if you also have TALib installed on your computer, your indicators are going to be calculated just as fast as before, but you're gonna be able to use all of the nice features of having a data frame rather than dealing with individual arrays and series. 
Once again, for Pandas TA, the documentation is a little bit lacking, and so it can require some experimentation to get up and running. But from what I've seen with my clients, they're much more familiar working with a data frame object than with piles and piles of different arrays, which you have to sort and make sense out of. And so if you don't need every single ounce of speed in your code, I would personally go for Pandas TA as your technical analysis library of choice. Now, the third library I'm going to cover today is simply called TA, which is another library that you can easily find on PyPy. In terms of where it sits as a ecological niche in the TA world, I'd say it's broadly a competitor to Pandas TA, as it also works with data frames and numpy arrays. Personally, I tend to use it when Pandas TA doesn't have the correct indicator for me. Sometimes they're available in the TA library, and so it's worth having that third backup before you go and write the whole thing yourself in number. You can think of both Pandas TA and TA as a further compatibility layer on top of that 1996 TA lib code. It's basically just bringing it up to the modern day where we can use it with things like data frames. Now, of course, this does come with a cost in that every layer of abstraction you add into the code, you're exponentially increasing the likelihood of finding bugs. That's just something to think about, especially if you're running this live you obviously want your indicators to be calculated correctly or at least in the way you want. There are some other subtle differences between the different libraries that you want to keep an eye on. So for example, an indicator like the RSI, there are multiple different definitions of the RSI if you look at the underlying mathematical formula and different platforms will use different versions. So if you're migrating from TradingView and you use TALib, that might give you a different value for the RSI compared to what you're used to. Or again, if you contrast TALib with Pandas TA, they might give subtly different values because they're using different mathematical functions. So depending on where you're coming from, I would verify that your particular library uses the methodology that you like and that you're normally used to. I've seen that trip up quite a few different people. And so to summarize here, if you have a need for speed and you want the lowest possibility of introducing any further bugs into your code, you want things to be nice and stable, I'd recommend just going with TALib, especially if you're a more advanced user. That's how you're gonna get the most horsepower and if you want to extend TALib, you can write some custom number function to go alongside it and it'll work just fine. If usability is more important than speed, then I'd recommend trying out Pandas TA, ideally with TALib installed so that your indicators will be calculated in the background using TALib. But even without TALib, let's say you can't get it installed, Pandas TA is a solid choice and super nice to use with data frames. And if neither of those work for you, then feel free to try out TA as a potential third option. So that's everything I've got to say about TA libraries in Python. I'll leave some links in the description to tutorials on how to use these libraries, as I know the documentation can be quite dense if you're a beginner. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.